I'm Dr. Michael Patterson, clinical psychologist and EMDR Europe accredited senior trainer. I run trainings and workshops for experienced mental health professionals. In this video, one of them is asking me a particular question. Please join us. What way are disturbing memories stored? When disturbing memories occur, they become locked in the brain, stored the way they were experienced at the time of the original event, locked in what's called implicit memory. You can think of these experiences as being stored in a memory network. Let's say a memory network looks like a hand. The fingers represent channels of information which are associated with each other. These go together to create that whole memory. One channel of information may have the sensory aspects of the experience. The sights, the sounds, the smells and the tastes. Another, the thoughts that we had at the time of that original event. Another, the emotions. Another channel could have the physical sensations that we experienced at that time. And another channel, the negative self-belief about ourselves which is created by that experience. Think of that as a verbal summary of the stored affect. When that memory network is activated, what's stored in those channels feeds into the present. It affects our perception, our attitude and then our behaviour. It can have quite a profound impact on us. An example of how the memory network can feed into the present and cause us disturbance is, let's say somebody who has grown up in the environment of being told you're stupid, you're useless and you're no good. As a result of that, this person has developed a negative self-belief of there's something wrong with me. That's stored in that memory network. And as he or she goes through life, they draw on what they believe about themselves to make sense of the situation they're in. It colours their perception, their attitude, and then their behaviour. So when faced with a new situation, I would draw on what I believe about myself stored in this memory network. If it's something to do with, I'm not good enough, well, head might go down. Why bother? I'm going to fail anyway. Or what may happen is that I strive to achieve, which in itself is wonderful. But instead of setting the standard here, I'm exceeding that because I'm probably after perfection. And of course, perfection is rarely, if ever, achieved. So by striving for perfection, I'm going to fall short of the mark. And this reinforces this negative self-belief. There's something wrong with me. I might set the standard here and achieve it. Wonderful. But as soon as I achieve that standard, I keep raising the bar higher and higher and higher and higher. So I never have ownership of that success. So basically, I'm setting myself up to fail. These negative self-beliefs, once stored there in these memory networks, affect our perception, our attitude and our behaviour. They are the basis of the psychopathology. Adaptive memory networks, on the other hand, positive experiences which we have had, or indeed negative experiences which have been resolved, are adaptive memories. These are the basis of mental health. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel below. I want to help you become the best that you could possibly be delivering EMDR therapy.